Hello there. Come on in. We've got a great show today because, well, we're going to have four Korean veterans, one from the Navy, Army, Air Force, and Marine, share with us their experience in Korea, as well as their displays, and a couple of other really interesting. I think you'll get a big smile from the sailor's story. When the communists attacked South Korea on the 25th of June, 1950, rapidly rushed U.S. forces fought a desperate battle in the Pusan perimeter. In mid-September, the United States led an amphibious landing in the Incheon, while ground and air attacked out of the Pusan perimeter. The North Korean army retreated north, losing almost 75% of its forces. As the U.S. forces approached the Yalu River, Chinese attacked in huge numbers, and after the hard, hard fighting, the line stabilized around the 38th parallel and became a bitter slugfest until the armistice. As a refresher for all of you born after the Korean War, every Korean War veteran is authorized four medals, as shown here, the National Defense Service Medal, the United States Korean Service Medal, the United Nations Medal for Service in Korea, and the Republic of South Korea's Medal for War Service. I should also mention that most enlisted veterans also earn the Good Conduct Medal. Shown on your left is the Army Good Conduct Medal, awarded to members of both the Army and the Army Air Force, or at that time, the new Air Force, the Navy Good Conduct Medal, the Marine Good Conduct Medal, and the Coast Guard Good Conduct Medal. The Air Force Good Conduct Medal, shown on the far right, was not instituted till 1963, so Air Force veterans of the Korean War earned the Army Good Conduct Medal, if they earned a Good Conduct Medal. The United States Navy brought its big guns to the Korean War, like 16-inch guns, and it brought its aircraft carriers. And just take a look at this picture of an award ceremony on an aircraft carrier to give you an idea of how many sailors it took to put those planes in the air. But perhaps the most interesting story you're going to hear is one about a minesweeper, the wooden hull minesweepers. And let me tell you the story of this sailor on the USS Mockingbird, a wooden hull minesweeper in Korean waters. He wrote, After high school, I enlisted in 1949 and ended up as a crewman on the minesweeper USS Mockingbird, AMS 27. We were a tight crew with a good captain. The work was cold, wet, and dangerous. And the mine-chasing operations off of Incheon and Wausong were really scary. I saw the sweeper Magpie go down and the pirate and the pledge sink from mines. After we rescued the survivors, they made us the flagship of Mine Division 31. This honor allowed us to be the first into any minefield. <laughs> I was really happy to finally see our home port for repairs. We earned our battle stars in the Korean service. This Korean War veteran's case tells an interesting story of his service. He has multiple awards of the Navy Good Conduct Medal. He has the Medal for China Service off the shores of the Chinese mainland. He has the Occupation Medal of Japan, which means he was there after World War II, but before the Korean War. He has the Korean War Service Medal, the Expeditionary Medal, the United Nations Medal, the Republic of South Korea War Service Medal, his Marksmanship or Rifle Expert Medal, and a Commemorative Medal for the Republic of Korea Presidential Unit Citation. This carrier pilot has an interesting display which tells you he was, a well, a hell of a pilot because he has the Distinguished Flying Cross, he has a Purple Heart for being wounded in action, the Air Medal, and he also has the American Campaign and World War II Victory Medal, it means that he was having his second war when he was called up to fight in the Korean War. Our Army veteran wrote, After artillery school at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, I shipped out on the General W.H. Gordon troop ship. I arrived in Pusan and was moved by boxcar up to the front. As a new man in a gun crew, I went to the ammunition dump where I prepared charges for our 155 howitzers. I worked up to the fire direction center, and during the winter of 52 and 53, the front had stabilized and it became an artillery battle. One day we fired over a thousand rounds and usually shot at least 400 to 500. Just before the ceasefire, the communist forces attacked in front of us and overran the Republic of Korea Division and the Triple Nickel Battalion in front of us. We were firing Charge 1, but we did not have to retreat. 
Shortly afterwards, we were pulled back to Camp Etienne Head, and I rotated home. Every soldier's experience was different, and every soldier's display is different. In this unique case, not only does this combat soldier have a Purple Heart and the regular awards, but he also has a special medal awarded to him by the state of New York, which is shown in the bottom right-hand corner of this display case. This picture of a P-51 taxiing through a flooded airfield is a perfect lead-in to our Air Force Korean War veteran. He wrote, I was a young corporal when we flew into a dirt airstrip in Teague on a PAC C-47. I joined the 632nd Tactical Air Control Group providing forward air controllers to the Army unit. We set up in a graveyard, and winter was especially bitter for our ill-equipped unit. I went forward with the facts until a jeep hit a mine and I broke my arm. The CO had me maintain radio transmitters for our relay station. The smells and the bitter cold will be with me always. I'll never forget it. The one thing I'll always remember, though, is how much the GIs appreciated having a forward air control team in their holes directing airstrikes. <laughs> they also kept us fed better than at the base. Look close and you'll see his personal P-38, that is his can opener for sea rations attached to his dog tags. <laughs> Pretty cool. Almost every airman's display will be different, and what's unusual is the one on the left shows you prior service in World War II to include the occupation of Germany before service in Korea. The one on the right shows you service after the Korean War because he has not only the Army Good Conduct Medal, but multiple awards of the Air Force Good Conduct Medal, which wasn't awarded until 1963. Our Marine veteran wrote, It seemed like we always had to make stuff or improvise in Korea. We wrapped blankets together for winter sleeping bags. Nights were so dark and bitter cold, my canteen would often freeze solid. My scariest night in Dog Company, 2nd Battalion, 1st Marines, we were flanked by a Fox Company on the MLK with the Easy behind us, when we were hit with a half a dozen T-34 tanks and infantry. How Fox Company stopped them, I'll never know, but they did. Some of us got wounded. God bless those brave Marines and all those Korean War veterans who saved my life that night. Here are two other Marine Corps Korean veterans displays, one from the 2nd Marine Division and one who served with the 1st Marine Division. Thank you for watching. The purpose of this show, of course, was to remember and honor our Korean War veterans. So if you know a Korean veteran, please take time to hear his story, like you did today. See you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop. <laughs>